Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another weekly update. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna do something a little bit different with these weekly updates. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot these last couple of weeks about more than just the scale. And you know, we, I, I think we all know that in the back of our head, right? That, you know, our weight loss journey, our health journey is more than just the scale. That the scale is not gonna capture everything that is going on in our lives and I think that it's just important to, you know, have that in our mind. And I talked about that actually with my monthly wrap up in January and I did my measurements and all of that and showed you that even though I didn't have a huge loss for the entire month, I, sorry, I'm like, like my life, you guys, pet hair on my face. Um, you know, I highlighted that, yes, I didn't have a huge loss. I did have a loss and it was great to have, you know, that loss. I can't remember what it was. What was it like 2.6 pounds for the entire month, three pounds for the entire month, but I lost like four inches, four point something inches for the entire month off of, you know, the areas of my body that I, that I measure. So it's more than just the scale, but it's also more than just measurements too. And I, so I want to have all these weekly updates to focus on, I mean, I will share my, you know, what the scale said. And this week there was a loss. So I'm not highlighting these because this week there wasn't a loss. I'm highlighting it because I want this to be the focus of all my weekly updates. That way it keeps it in the front of my mind, keeps it in the front of your mind as you navigate through your journey. Even if somebody is in maintenance right now and you're not in weight loss mode, these are still things to keep in mind because it's all about wellness and your entire journey. You know, it's really we're on like a health journey. We're not really on a weight loss journey on in its own because it all goes hand in hand. So I just have a few things that every week and I, you know, I, I actually took notes this week for our weekly update and I'm going to every single week because I think it's important to, to highlight these things. So first up, you know, and if you're new to my channel, my name is Jess, welcome. I get a lot of people asking, what is your name? Because I just, I forget to say that. And I watch other channels and everybody starts with their name and I'm like, why do they say their name at every beginning of every video? But I guess I just forget that there could be new people here. Um, so if you're not subscribed, I hope you'll take some time to do so. I try to do about four videos a week, sometimes five, just depending on my week. I do work a full-time job, more than full-time job. <laughs> I do work outside the home and I do do a couple weeks, couple days every week at home, but primarily I am in the office every week. I have to say that in case my videos are not super consistent up every single week. So I just want to let you guys know why that could be. I try to be consistent as possible, um, but I do have a very high demanding job. Um, I am in perimenopause. That is something that happened last year, um, which is been a just thrown me. And I would say between January and July, I was not handling it well. Like it was, it was really throwing me. But then from like August through the end of the year, I was starting to accept it. I was starting to, I did a lot of research. And for me, that's, that's just the kind of person I am. I do a lot of research. And when I say I do research, I do research on like, you know, health websites. I mean, like ones like with like studies and ones from actual like hospitals and, you know, things like that. I don't just look at like, you know, dietitians or nutritionist blogs and things like that. You know, I actually look at actual, like there's studies attached to these things. And so that's really important for me to have really good research. And you know, with doing that research, I started taking some supplements and I just realized I have to just accept it. So that's where we're at in my life. This week has been quite the week. Um, we have a lot going on at work, um, a lot of changing in staff. We have a, a, co a really close coworker in my department that's leaving. You know, it's been just an emotional, like really, really emotional this week, roller coaster. And um, also personally, my husband's um, doctor, he went and saw his doctor on Tuesday. And today's Friday, by the way, when I film these. And um, be, due to, my husband has Parkinson's, but he also has a mental health diagnosis and he takes three, four, four different medications for that mental health diagnosis. And two of them can make your Parkinson's symptoms worse. And we went and saw a neurologist, which we didn't like her. So we're, um, and his doctor is in the process of helping us find a new one. 
but um, one of the things we have to look at is possibly changing over some of his medication. And the last time we did this was three years ago due to one of his medications putting him into kidney failure. And so um, we had to change medications and it is so hard you guys with, um, you know, it's, it's hard anyways to change medication, right? Because it takes you a while for your body to adjust. But when it's a mental health drug, it's even harder, <laughs> believe me. And so I've been really stressing out about it. He has not, and I don't, he never does. And I think, I don't know why, like he just, those kind of things don't stress him out. Like it does me like completely. And so she's weaning him off. It's going to take a month. I take about four weeks, but when they do this, when they wean him off of one and then start a new one and they do it very slowly, which is great. And so he normally sees his psychiatrist every three weeks to, you know, for medication updates. But this time he's going next month after he's gone through this four weeks. So that's just been really stressful. And let me tell you guys also in the middle of this all, my cycle is completely messed up. And so these are all the factors I had to take into effect. So let me tell you what has been going on with my cycle. You know, I, this is what made me realize, oh yes, you are going in perimenopause. Not to mention that I started having hot flashes, which was a eye-opening experience. Um, so <laughs> I had a regular cycle in August, did not have one in September, had a regular one in October, did not have one in November. Now, since December, we are completely messed up. I had one on December. This is the start date, by the way. December 9th, December 31st, January 21st, and we started on February 12th for this week. So it has been just, I mean, I am feeling drained. Like I, it is exhausting to never know what is going to happen with your cycle. It is exhausting. And I honestly, in this cycle, you know, sometimes when I have it, it's like, I do get that kind of like tired, but it's also been, I've noticed these last couple since, I mean, things have changed with my symptoms since having periods on perimenopause. Like my symptoms have completely changed. And one of the things that has changed is, is I'm much more emotional, like much more emotional and hormonal as far as the moods up and down. And not to mention, I mean, I have hypothyroidism, which also is a symptom anyway, even when taking medication. And, but I have noticed that this week I am so drained. Like I am exhausted by like three o'clock. I feel like I have been up for hours and hours and hours in, you know, running and everything else. And it's just has exhausted me. And I think part of it is that due to perimenopause and the hot flashes, I stopped drinking caffeine in the afternoon. So it's like I have any caffeine I have is before noon, have none after. And so I used to kind of have like an afternoon, like pick me up around two or three. Cause I've always kind of like, you know, I get up so early and I'm a morning person, so I'm very, very productive in the morning. And afternoon, I'm just useless, basically. <laughs> and I, but that three o'clock, not having to take that, you know, to have any kind of caffeine, I am zonked. And that's how it's been this whole week. So let's go into the things that I want to kind of go through to measure besides just weight loss. So one of them, energy. So that's why I wanted to kind of go into like how I'm feeling. Energy, how is your energy with, you know, with how you've been eating all week? Um, have you been doing your workouts? Typically, if you have a good week of eating healthy, nutritious foods for your body, you're gonna notice your energy is up. You're doing your workouts, you're doing your movement, you're getting, you know, you're not just sitting in your chair, whatever motivates you, you'll notice your energy goes up. And honestly, I have felt a difference in my energy, even though I'm having that, you know, kind of getting super tired by three o'clock. I have had a lot of energy during the day and it's not just physical energy. I noticed like really increased energy in just my mind. I don't know how to explain that anymore, but yes, energy has been great for me besides just feeling just by the end of the afternoon. But I think that's just my period. That's all the emotional stuff going on. It's just, that's, you know, just life. But um, because of, I hit my goals and we'll go into like my goals. Actually, maybe I should talk about my goals first because that kind of goes into all of this stuff. My goals, strength training three times a week. 
I actually did it this week, you guys. I did it, and I did not only just do one. Like I, you know, I always say, okay, I'm gonna focus on one part of the body, which arms right now are my huge focus. I did arms and abs three times this week, and they were not huge long videos. You don't have to do long videos, you guys. I'll do like a 10, 12 minute arm and like a 15, and I think actually the abs I've been doing this week are 18 minutes. I did both three times this week. I hated every minute of it, but I liked how I felt afterwards. Um, supplements, I did miss a day of supplements so far. Um, so I did I did my supplements every day but Wednesday. Um, biking, I have done my bike 30 minutes every single day since January 2nd. So we're doing great on that. Water hitting 100 ounces, at least 100 ounces every day. I've been doing really good with that. Reading 60 minutes a day, been doing good with that. And tracking, been doing great with that. I track both on WW and on the Lose It app, but that's just my preference to do both. And it hasn't, once I've gotten like broken through that, this is annoying barrier, it hasn't been. Actually, I think I've hit 53, I think today is 53 days, 53 or 54 days on Weight Watchers that I've been tracking and Lose It app is like 45 days. So it's been like since January 2nd. I have, I have tracked every day. You, you just have to break through that barrier, but for me, it's just, it's important for me to track both. So talk about energy. The next thing, how do your clothes fit? Are your clothes fitting good? I feel like mine really don't feel like they've changed so much this month, but I definitely know that feeling because you know when you wake up some days and you just feel heavy. Well, I have felt that way obviously because of my period. I'm a little bit bloated, but then I go to put my clothes on and I'm like, well, but they don't fit tighter. You know, I mean, things feel good. Like right now, my jeans, they feel really good actually now that I think about it. And I, so yeah, you have to kind of gauge it also, but how do your, how do your clothes fit? Now your body measurements, I personally only measure once a month, um, but some people do it weekly, makes them feel good. So think about doing that if you just need some extra encouragement or maybe every two weeks, but I highly, highly, highly recommend at least doing it once a month. Your relationship with your food. If you're like all of us, you know, there's so many people who have a bad relationship with food. I can say that I'm one of those people that tends to gravitate towards food during very stressful, emotional times. And you all, like there were so many times this week due to just the crazy. I mean, I can't, I can't go into all the crazy from the last couple of weeks, um, just with like, with everything. And um, I'll tell you, there were so many times that I was in a, in a position, an opportunity to, to binge or to even just, you know, somebody bought brownies to work one day. Somebody, you know, I mean, it was, and I honestly, I and I will be completely honest, the day that the brownies were there was like Monday or Tuesday. I went to go to the break room to get one, but I had my water cup with me and I got water and I was like, no, I don't, I don't need it. I, I don't. It was such a good feeling. It was so empowering. Like it really was. Now, is my relationship with my food completely healed? No, of course not. It's going to always be a working thing. I don't think it'll ever be healed, but it was, it was very empowering. So if you can just break through and say no, you will feel so good about yourself. And I did that so many times these last two weeks. It's, it was just amazing. And I just feel so good doing that and even talking about it it just makes you a little emotional like to think that i said no so many times these last few weeks so many times i could have easily you know i mean there's so much you know available to us and i just i said no and you know there's even times when i was just like i just don't want to make dinner we're going to talk about food here in a second <laughs> and other changes that have been happening with me um, but you know, it was just like, it would just be so easy just to go run out and get fast food. Cause you know, and just have that for dinner and you know, it, it's just, but I didn't, I, I mean, there was times when I actually was getting ready to do the order and I did not. And I just told myself, why, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? So relationship with food, you know, just think about that as each week you're kind of going through how your week went. Um, consistency. That's why it's good to, you know, track. I, you know, sit here and I mark off every day and I just keep track of, you know, of my goals that I have and how I achieve those goals. So consistency. I've been very consistent probably since January 2nd. I have been so consistent. So 
that's a big thing strength and i'm not even ta only talking muscle strength but just strength in yourself but yes i do feel stronger because i've been doing those workouts i feel a lot stronger when my abs were hurting on uh, one wednesday um after just two days of doing the abs i I went to go sit down at work and I was like, oh, what is that? I mean, it just, my muscle hurt. And I was like, why does my ab muscle hurt? Then I realized I have been doing ab workouts. And it's just a good feeling to feel that muscle hurt because you knew you had been working it out. So yes, I feel stronger. And then the last thing, mindset. Again, that kind of goes along with the relationship with the food, but just in general, your mindset and really is changing from complete weight loss mode to overall health journey. And I think that's switching that mindset or just from like, I'm gonna fail. I, you know, this perimenopause is killing me, is kicking my butt. I'm gonna fail, I'm never gonna lose weight. If there's things that are messing with your mindset, maybe it's watching certain people on YouTube or on Instagram, unfollow those people for now. I mean, because it doesn't help you, you know, and for a long time I had to unfollow a ton of people and it's funny because some of those people recently have popped back up on my feed on YouTube and I was saying, well, I thought I was subscribed to them. And then I remembered, no, I had to because some of their videos was all about like, you know, how I lost a hundred pounds or what I'm eating to lose 50 pounds in four months. And, you know, it's just kind of discouraging sometimes and it would really mess with my mind. And so I had to unfollow from a lot of those people. I do have to say, I feel like my mind is in a really good place. And so for now I have subscribed to a few more people again that I had unfollowed just because they had great ideas for food, great ideas for, you know, in general organization, you know, how they track their stuff. I mean, there's so many great things about so many people but sometimes there's just something triggering about them and if you have to unfollow them for a while then do so I mean if there's nothing wrong with that um, and sometimes it's just better for your mental health so uh, mindset is such a huge huge thing so every week I'm going to kind of just touch on each of these things and just kind of talk about how they related to my week but let's go ahead and talk about my weight loss for the week so despite all the crazy and even being on my period for the fifth time in like six weeks. No, it's been actually, well, since December 9th, I um, actually am down 0.8. So I hit 54 pounds down on Weight Watchers. Um, I don't know what my overhaul like weight loss is. I'd have to look back at my very first tracking, which is on my fitness pal, ironically, because that's where I started. And so that's where like my historical, like very first weigh in was. And so I'd have to look at that, but it's 54 pounds down on Weight Watchers doing great. Like I said, I'm down 0.8 and I feel really good. And I really do think a lot of it is that mental shift, but also I have been hitting my goals. So I've been doing really good. Let's talk about food for a second really quickly. I've been trying to keep these videos 15 minutes or less, so it's gonna be a little bit over because I did have to kind of do that introduction <laughs> of who I am and where I'm at in my life. Um, I am having really weird food aversions, which I have never had like until recently. And so I can only attribute it to perimenopause. I don't know. I actually haven't really looked specifically for perimenopause and food aversions. But the last two weeks, I have been having the hardest time with my meal preps. They'll taste really good. Like usually the day I make my meal prep is on Sunday and I typically have one of my lunches on the day that I meal prep them because it's usually morning and it's like I get done like towards around lunchtime and I usually have one for lunch and they're great. But I have been having the hardest time. Like I go to open up my thing and I look at it and it just, I mean, I was fine Sunday and I was fine Monday. So I had one of them on Sunday and one of them on Monday. I, I just, I probably only like ate a few bites on Wednesday and Thursday with the ones that I had, or Wednesday I had. So Sunday, I think I had the KFC bowl and it was so good on Sunday because it was literally right after I got done making it. Tuesday, I had the enchilada and Chiritos. Again, really, really super good. Then Wednesday, I went to have the KFC bowl again and it I just couldn't. And then for dinner, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the other Enchirito because I'll be home on Thursday and I can have more time to make a lunch. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I ended up just having a chicken salad or something. I know I had leftovers. I had the leftovers. Um, I no, I can't remember what I had for Wednesday for dinner. I don't know. I have no idea. Cause Tuesday I had the leftover like stir fry. 
But anyway, um, I just couldn't do it. I'm ha and it was happened. The same thing happened last week. I don't know what's going on. So I think I'm going to change up my meal preps a little bit. I think I'm just going to do ingredient prep for a while, which I used to do a long time ago. So it's just really prepping ingredients. So we're going to prep a bunch of veggies. We may do some roasted veggies, some raw veggies. I'm going to maybe, I think I'm going to prep some quinoa or rice because I have both in my cabinet. Um, I'm just going to do a lot of ingredient prep. If I do decide to have any kind of like Mexican dishes, I may prep some cauliflower rice, um, Spanish rice or something because all of those things I feel like will be okay because they're not whole meals. They're just like ingredients. And I think that I can handle them better. So I don't know until I can get over this, things are just going to have to change a little bit. And, um, so I think I'm just going to focus more on ingredient prep things that I can just grab and go and throw together a quick bowl or a salad or, you know, something like that. And then all my dinners will be made fresh. So I think that's going to be the plan because I don't know, let me know if you guys are, I know a ton of you are in perimenopause like myself or in menopause or been through it all. Let me know, was food aversion something that you went through? Because this is a new thing for me. It has started with lunch meat, which now I can eat certain lunch meats again, but they have to be ones straight from the deli. I cannot eat any packaged ones now. Um, it just even the thought of it right now, <laughs> it's making me not feel good. And then again, like the meal prep meals. So let me know, like, did you have any of those food aversions? It's, it's a really weird concept to me and it, it's, it's weird, but anyway, so thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Let me know how you guys are doing. Let me know how you're, you know, how, how is your week related to these things that I talked about? And I want to hear from you guys, like, how did your week with these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things, body measurements, taking that out, six things if you don't measure every week, you know, how did your week relate to these six, you know, measurements that we can measure that's more than just the scale. So I want to hear from you guys. Let's talk about it in the comments. Let's be nice. Let's be kind because any unkind or unnice comments will be deleted. So, so you know, um, those will be gone because I don't want negativity in my comment section. So did you guys see that? One of my light bulbs just went out. So all of a sudden it got just super dark. I have to start working about five minutes. So that's really great. We'll get the husband in here to fix. Oh, it just came back on. <laughs> okay, guys, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.